In this quick video, I'm going to show you how to make the Convoy S2 Plus 20 watts. I'm calling this the Convoy Inferno because it's like no S2 Plus out there. It's not going to be easy, but I'll show you all the tricks you can do to make it the world's most powerful flashlight. And I'm not talking about big huge flashlights that are 100 watts and can't fit in your pocket. It's going to be a lightweight everyday carry. You're going to have it in your pocket and you can use it to walk down the sidewalk and within a few clicks you can use it to light up the entire park. Boom! Easy access. 2,000 lumens easily and when you need to when you hear something in the bush you can burst out all that light otherwise you can leave it on low it lasts about 12 hours on this low so it's like having a massive light inside the palm of your hand and it can light up the entire park you can see that pickup truck way over there no problem see way up into this tree if you have to this is just a tiny handheld convoy s2 plus this little tiny convoy here is pumping out all that light, lighting up the entire park. This is eight 7135s and this is double 16 7135s. So it's a little warmer, it's 2750. This one's 3100 or above, so it looks a little whiter. But as you can see, the one with over five amps is a lot brighter, it's getting hotter in my hand, and it's definitely twice as much power almost. So as you can see, this one doesn't wash out the tail as much, as this one. So you can tell it's a little brighter in the camera but it's hard to tell. So yeah this one can't wash it out because it's not that bright and this one's washing out some of the detail. So you can tell it's brighter by that fact. So after about a minute this thing is basically too hot to hold. If you need a powerful flashlight upgrade it to 16 times 7135s. Some may think it's not useful because it gets hot, but when you need a lot of power for a short amount of time, that comes in handy. And then when you need very little power, it can still go on low, and this will last a very long time. And this is not bright at all, and it definitely won't get hot on this. At 20 watts, it puts out as much light as a 100 watt incandescent light bulb, so that's pretty bright. So there's one secret thing that makes this flashlight more powerful than any other flashlight out there, and it's the use of copper. The pad that the LED sits on is the sink pad 2. When I went to solder that on there, I pushed down on it while it was cooling, and that thinned out the solder as much as I could. It made the LED push against the copper as close as it could get so it can draw all the heat away. And that's how you can push over 5 amps to the LED without it burning out. If you put it on an aluminum pad, it'll burn right out in about 2 seconds. And I've tested it, and it does burn out in 2 seconds. The XML2 onto there. So we're going to plug this in, and we're going to see what this says. Holy crap, 5.1 amps. So using the copper sink pad, you can actually run it over 5 amps for over an hour and nothing happens to it. In addition to the copper sink pad, we had to make a bunch of copper slugs and solder that onto the back of the block. And the block is made of brass, so it's got high copper content and it has good thermal conductivity as well. So with all that copper, it pulls all that heat out into the aluminum body of the convoy and allows the LED to run at 20 watts, but still keep its cool and stay alive. If other manufacturers actually went to all the trouble of using a sink pad too, making the brass block stronger, using a lot of thermal grease on the threads, they could get their flashlights up to 20 watts as well, but for some reason they don't want to do that, probably because it gets too hot and most people don't want that extra power. But there's a lot of people out there who want the most power and this is how you're going to do it. You can also get extra power through the tail by adding a wire braid to the rear spring, but they haven't done that either. The spring is one of the bottlenecks in the flashlight because the spring isn't made out of metal that has a high copper content so it can't conduct electricity that well and it's actually quite high resistance and it heats up and you lose a lot of power there. So all you gotta do is beef everything up. So in conclusion, this is the world's most powerful flashlight. You can make your own. Nobody's making it right now and nobody's selling it so you're gonna have to make your own but if you want turbo at 20 watts in a single celled single LED flashlight then this is the way you gotta do it. Now stay tuned if you want to hear how I built the Convoy S2 Plus 20 watt flashlight, which I'm going to call the Convoy Inferno, because if you're not careful with this thing, it could get really hot, burn you, cause a fire, or even explode. If and the lithium ion batteries don't like it when they get hot, they go into this thing called Thermal Runaway, and they basically explode in an exothermic reaction. It doesn't have thermal protection, so it's a very dangerous flashlight, so beware if you're going to build it and handle it with care. Don't give it to anyone who doesn't know how to use a higher powered flashlight and doesn't know how to handle lithium ion batteries safely. So if you try to make this, be very careful and do it at your own risk. If anything shorts with a high powered lithium ion battery, 
it could cause explosions or fires so be very very careful so you want to use 22 gauge 200 degree silicone wire if you use 80 degree wire or something less it's going to melt and burn itself out so you got to use 22 gauge 200 degree silicone wire the next thing you got to do is get copper and you can get copper pipe that stuff is 99 percent copper you can Dremel little circles from it and then hammer it down flat and then dremel it to about 16 millimeters like the LED pad and then just shave it down until it fits inside. Then you'll want to tin the copper plates by heating them up with a torch or an iron and then just adding solder to it. You want to plug the holes with some silicone plugs just made out of silicone insulation from silicone wire. You can plug those holes so the solder doesn't come out and then just put a bunch of tin foil around it and then you can flame it up and heat up the block and add solder to it. And once you got solder in the block you can put your copper slugs in there and put more solder on there as you need. Then you'll want to drill the two holes big enough for your wires to go through. Then you can use a larger drill bit to smoothen down the sharp edges. You can do it by hand and then the sharp edges won't be so sharp. So here you can see the thickness of the brass and then the thickness of the copper we've added. We've basically tripled the amount of copper behind there. That's going to help keep the LED cool and it won't burn out. You'll need separate 7135 current limiters, about eight of them. You can add just three or four, but I added about eight. You can order them separately, so you don't have to desolder them, or you can just desolder them from another driver. It's pretty easy to desolder. If you make your iron on high, you can just put a bunch of solder on the ground and then put a bunch of solder across the three pins and the thing will fall right off. There's two different ways to add the 7135s to the existing driver. You can bend the pins down and then just clamp the current limiter on top with an alligator clip and then solder it all up. Or what I like to do is put a spacer between it so that the top one doesn't heat up the bottom one and burn it out if it actually starts to heat up. If you're going to add a spacer, it's going to get a lot harder though because you've got to add wires to it. And as you can see, you've got to put the wires there and then cut it and that takes a long time. But if you want your flashlight to last long, then you'll want to add that little space because electronic components hate mutual heating. And that's how they burn themselves out. And to make the flashlight handle all the current, I had to take the tail apart, add a braid to the spring because the spring can't conduct much electricity. And so I added the braid and the braid can handle the extra current that's flowing through there. I took apart the tail switch and soldered up all the parts just to beef it up and allow it to handle more current. So I wanted to quickly show you how to make braid by yourself. If you have thin stranded cable, this is a high quality silicone cable. You can get four strips of that. And then once you have four divisions of this, you can go ahead and braid it yourself. And then what you do with your four wires, you always go with the left one. So you take the white one and you go over, under, over. And then you take the yellow one and go over, under, over. And you just repeat that over and over again. And you will get yourself copper braided cable. So as you see, that's how you make your copper braided cable and now when it compresses it's flexible and then when you solder it on make sure you do a snake shape and offset the solder joint so that when you push your battery down it doesn't go on top of the solder joints. One way to desolder and solder on your LED to the aluminum or copper heat pad is to just get your iron up to temperature a tiny bit above what it takes to melt the solder and then heat up the aluminum or copper heat pad. You just gotta heat up either the positive or negative terminal or alternate between them until the thing's hot enough for you to get the LED off. As soon as it gets up to temperature to melt, you can take your iron off and then that's the temperature you want to keep it at. So just so you don't go way above the temperature to melt the solder because if you do, it'll damage the LED. Once you take the iron off, it'll start cooling off and then it'll solidify right away. So that'll minimize the amount of damage to the LED. You can also get a wet towel and cool it down from the back side as well. So that's a pretty easy way to solder your LED onto your aluminum or copper heatsink pads. I put on the LED with a whole bunch of thermal grease, put on the wires, and before I put the driver back in I put electrical tape in the block so that if the flashlight is dropped and the battery smashes the driver into the front it won't accidentally short things out too much. Before I put it back together I put a whole bunch of thermal grease on the threads where the block would contact and that allows all the heat to transfer to the body and away from the LED, keeping it cool and allowing it to run at 20 watts. I'm also using the 3500 milliamp hour LG MJ1 18650. It's one of the best lithium ion batteries right now and it can handle 10 amps continuous no problem. If you're going to use this flashlight in turbo mode make sure you use a good battery that can handle over 5 amps otherwise it could heat up and explode so 
you don't want that. So make sure you use a good battery. I think the Panasonic 3400 can handle it, but just barely. You can also get the LG 3000 milliamp hour HG2. It can handle 20 amps continuous. And now you just got to be careful with this flashlight because it's going to melt plastic, no problem. So if you have it turn on in your pocket by accident, it'll put a hole right through your pocket. Because if this thing comes on in your pocket, you're toast. And it's going to get up to 90 degrees Celsius or 196 degrees Fahrenheit pretty quickly. So I'd be careful if you're using this as everyday carry. I'd probably unscrew the tail cap quarter turn or half a turn and that'll keep it from burning a hole through your pocket. The Convoy S2 Plus at 10 watts is still a pretty dangerous flashlight but I think at 20 watts this thing just is that much more dangerous so be very careful with it. So I think it's rightfully named the Inferno. There's no other flashlight out there like it because it's too damn powerful. But if this is what you're looking for that's how I've done it. If you pair the convoy lights with a good bicycle mount, you can mount it onto your bicycle easily, use it as a bicycle light, and then you can quick release, take it with you so nobody steals it, and you're good to go. I just got a UV light mounted to this one right now because I was playing around, but you would obviously mount your proper light on there, and then you can light up the trail ahead. This mount's pretty cool. You can unscrew the top and then change it 90 degrees, so you can put it on your stem if you want, but I like to put it on the handlebar because the stem actually is angled, so it's better on the handlebar. I got this mount from Gearbest, it's pretty good, nice and strong, and does exactly what you need it to do, it stays in place. This UV light is pretty awesome as well. Check the link in the description if you want to buy this UV light. If you ride your bike around a lot, I definitely recommend getting a mount for your Convoy S2 Plus on your bike. Punching 20 watts out of this small aperture actually creates a lot more glare than 10 watts would have, and so, and glare is what gets you noticed, so cars are gonna see you, you're not gonna get cut off, you won't get run over and that'll be the safest way to ride your bike around. So this 20 watt mod wasn't just something to make a bright flashlight. It was to increase safety on the road and allow you to light up the road when you need it. So I hope you enjoyed that little video. Thanks for watching and I hope that helps. After adding all that copper to the head, this one weighs 66.9 and the stock one weighs so we've added a good 7 grams of lead and copper in there. You can see that bridge, no problem. Anything coming over that bridge, you can spot. This one, it's kind of losing some detail because it's only 60% as bright. So here's a straight down trail shot. You can see basically everything to your left and right. This one, you can still see everything, it's just not as bright. Then we'll compare it to the Skyray King, which is insane. Boom. basically lights up the entire forest. So it's basically a sleeper of a light. It's low when you need it, and then when you need a lot of power, it lights everything right up, no problem. So that's why you don't need it to be super powerful all the time, but it's very useful to have a very powerful light when you hear something in the bush or something sneaks up on you. I think this is basically the holy grail of powerful small lights. So add more copper to yours, make it 16 times, 7135s, braid that spring, solder everything up, and you've got yourself the most powerful light on earth. There's nothing that's this size that can light up an entire park like this. Sure, the convoy stock 10 watt is pretty powerful, but this is insane. This is basically 20 watts here.